Welcome to Inclusive Gathering Birmingham. If you haven't been with us before, we're a church that is on the journey toward what we call radical inclusion. Um, so whatever your sexual or your gender identity, whatever your race or ethnicity, whatever your ability or disability, um, you're very welcome to be here with us. We want you to be, feel you can be part of, part of us. We always say on the journey because a fundamental thing for us is that we are a learning community. We know that we don't always get everything right, but we want to not be um, stifled by that. We want to walk forward and learn together. So you're invited to be part of that with us today. <clears throat> today, I'm really excited because um, Alex Claire Young is with us to speak in a bit. Uh, Alex is the first openly transgender United Reformed Church minister. Um, and he has also written the book, transgender Christian human. And we're really thrilled that he's with us today, not only to speak, um, but also to be part of a Q&A afterwards. So um, at 5.15 after this session, we'll be meeting like live on Zoom uh, for this Q&A. If you haven't registered for it yet, please take some time during the service to do so via Eventbrite. The reason we're doing that was just making it a little bit more secure um, so that we can all feel safe to, to talk and ask whatever question. Um, and Alex is really ha happy to help us learn and um, you can ask him anything. So um, with that, I'm going to hand over to the band and uh, we'll see you again in a minute. I'm not a stranger to the dark. Hide away, they say, because they don't want your broken hearts. I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars Run away, and they say No one will love you as you are But I won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us For we are glorious 
Hi everyone, Joe here. I hope you are all okay. Today I'm going to share a prayer. If you're someone who prays, you might like to join in with me. If not, feel free to just let the words wash over you. This prayer was written by Alex Clare Young. It can be found in his book, Transgender, Christian, Human. Let us pray. In the beginning, God created all things, land and sea and the marshlands in between, man and woman and those in between. In the beginning, God created all things in diversity, with all possibilities in between. At our beginning, God created each one of us and all our possibilities. Gods of creation and change, we thank you for calling us by name. We remember how you changed the names of many called to do your work. Abraham and Sarah, Jacob, Peter and Paul, all journeyed with you and became new creations. In renaming them, you recreated their lives as you recreate us anew each day. Amen. Hi. Um, as part of our regular gatherings, we always do something that we call the question for sharing. Uh, and when we used to, well, back in the distant past, if you can remember when we met in person, um, we, we'd ask a question at the start of our gathering in order to just get people chatting to each other. Um, and uh, so we tried to continue that practice as we've been online. So in a minute, I'm gonna ask you a question and then Ronnie's gonna come and share his answer. And as he does, you can feel free to share your answer if you feel comfortable doing so in the Facebook Live comments. And I'll ask you again online tomorrow. So if you think of something in the meantime, um, you can, you can share it. So here's the question. What is one way that you've changed or grown as a person in the last five years? Hi, I'm Ronnie. I'm part of Inclusive Gathering. How have I grown in the last five years? Well, being in the prison as I am, um, as part of the chaplaincy team for the last six years, it's been a real time for me to grow. Being a minister before that in a, a conservative evangelical church and then moving to Twinson Green Prison, which is multi-faith uh, in the chaplaincy, secular um, as an environment, uh, not everybody is a as a person of faith there. So going from a conservative evangelical bubble into a place where among the team you're confronted with all different kinds of Christianity and people expressing faith in different sorts of ways. And uh being multi faith, you have to learn to think about the world differently. So seeing different people and seeing how people express themselves in different ways and have faith in, in different ways maybe made me more than anything else question maybe I don't have all the answers maybe I need to learn to be a bit more humble and realize that maybe I'm not right all the time even though I've, I've always kind of thought that evangelicalism always had the answers so it could be this could be a very long answer but this is actually a very short answer I just hope I've become more tolerant more knowledgeable, um, able to say that I don't have all the answers. And it's been hard at times, but it's been such a, a blessing as well, um, changing my whole kind of worldview. So I guess that's my, my answer and how I've grown and uh, continue to grow and be challenged. And uh, maybe your experience is, is uh, similar to mine. Hello, my name is Sarah, um, and I'm going to share a little bit about my experience in attending a book club event uh, hosted by Red Letter Christians UK about the book Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge. Um, there were two sessions held on the 20th of June and the 4th of July, um, and they're both hosted via Zoom by our own Daniel Wilson and Naomi Bennett. Uh, I and a number of others from Inclusive Gathering attended the 4th of July session, um, and that allowed us to have our own breakout room to discuss the book together. Uh, through the Black Lives Matter movement, many white people, myself included, have realized that we must do so much more to oppose structural racism um, and to become actively anti-racist. Uh, this event was set up to offer the chance to engage with and learn from an important black British voice without adding unnecessarily to the emotional labor, labor 
of um, black activists and faith leaders who are currently dealing with, um, uh, who are currently doing so much to support their own communities. The book itself began as a blog post published by Edo Lodge in 2014 with the same title, uh, describing her experience as a black British woman trying to engage with white people on the subject of structural racism, um, and also about the defensiveness and denial that she's met with when she does so. Uh, according to Edo Lodge, she wrote this book to articulate, this is a quote, um, to articulate the feeling of having your voice and confidence snatched away from you in the cocky face of the status quo, and to counter the lack of historical knowledge um, and the political backdrop you need um, to, answer, to anchor your opposition to racism. Uh, one of the things I love about Inclusive Gathering is that it is a learning community, um, and for many, the Black Lives Matter movement has been an urgent call to learn and to do better. Uh, to no longer be satisfied with saying, I'm not racist, therefore I'm not part of the problem. Um, but to realize that simply living in a society built in such a way that white people are necessarily at an advantage and black people are necessarily at a disadvantage is to be complicit in racism. Uh, a helpful distinction Edo Lodge outlined in her book that we discussed in the book club session um, is the difference between structural racism and personal prejudice. Uh, she says that structural racism is not just about personal pre prejudice, but the collective effects of bias. It is the kind of racism that has the power to drastically affect people's life chances. The way the session was laid out um, allowed us to discuss the book in a large group um, and then answer more specific questions in smaller breakout rooms. Um, so, for example, we discussed what we learned for the first time while reading the book, how it challenged what we thought we knew, um, and whether we recognize ways in which we could adapt our own behavior. Um, many of us found that in reading the book, we learned a lot about black British history, um, which often when you're learning about black history, you get it from um, the US perspective. Um, but Edel Lodge devotes an entire section to major events in British history that highlight the ingrained pervasive racism and racist systems that exist here too. Um, as well as the work that Black British people have done to oppose such systems through protest, activism, and education. Um, in the past, I, like many, have been nervous to say anything on the subject of racism out of fear of saying something wrong, but the Black Lives Matter movement has shown me that justice isn't gained through silence. Um, I need to learn how to use my voice and my white privilege to support Black people. Uh, I found the book to be incredibly insightful into a complex issue that can feel um, too big to tackle. But I know that even the longest journey starts with a single step, and for me, reading and talking about this book was that step. Uh, the next book club event, hosted by Red, Red Letter Christians UK, will be focused on the book We Need to Talk About Race by Ben Lindsay. Uh, it's taking place again via Zoom uh, on Saturday, the 1st of August at 10 a.m., and there will again be a breakout room for people from Inclusive Gathering so we can discuss the book together. Uh, if you're interested, you can sign up with Eventbrite using the link that'll be posted in the chat um, and then also on the Inclusive Gathering Birmingham uh, events and socials page. Thanks.
I'm David and I'll be sharing the reading today. Um, in a minute, uh, Alex Claire Young, who is the author of Transgender Christian Human, will be uh, sharing a reflection with us um, as Alex speaks. Uh, if anything comes to mind uh, or, or questions pop into your head, uh, write them down um, or you know put them on, uh, on your device um, just so that you can remember because at 5.15 uh, we've got a special uh, Q&A Zoom uh, with Alex, so you can, you can ask your questions uh, at that point. Um, the reading today is just one verse. Um, it's from a book called Galatians um, in the New Testament of the Bible. 
Um, Galatians was a letter that was written to sort of the really early uh, Christian community that was in a place called Galatia, hence the name uh, Galatians. Uh, and this is what it says. So, Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, you are all one in Christ Jesus. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Alex. I'm a minister in the United Reformed Church, and I currently minister to two groups, one of which is called Traspacious and is an online church, and one of which is called transgender, Christian, human. It's through trans Christian human that I fulfill my calling as a trans person to support other trans people and to help churches, community groups, workplaces and schools to understand a bit more about what it means to be trans. When I was a child, I felt like an alien. I went to an old girls school so absolutely everyone around me was female. And there were very particular expectations that just didn't make sense to me. I didn't really know any boys my age, so I didn't think that I was a boy. I just thought I was an alien, completely different from everyone else. And one day a spaceship would come down and take me back to where I belonged. It sounds quite funny to think of it now but I realized that actually I was probably really quite depressed and really struggling as a child. My dad was a minister, so we went to church. I didn't really like church because I had to wear dresses and I had to be polite and quiet and well behaved. As soon as I got home, I changed into my tracksuit as quickly as I could and went and hid under my table because I felt so uncomfortable and that was a place that I could feel safe. So I wasn't fond of church, but I did love God. And I loved talking about God and writing about God and drawing about God. RE was my favorite class in school because I got to tell stories about God. But other people didn't really like me. I didn't seem to fit in. I got bullied loads and I always got blamed when things went wrong. And I kind of thought that God must not like me very much. As a teenager, I moved to a mixed school and met boys my own age, and immediately I felt that I was one of them. But I just thought that meant I was insane, that I needed help, that someone needed to change me. Because back then, trans people weren't very visible. I didn't know that it was possible to transition. So I thought, I'm a girl who feels like a boy. I must be mad, that isn't possible. Now, I did have a lot of mental health difficulties, but I now realise that being a boy wasn't one of them. In fact, they were caused by my inability to come out, by me not actually being able to see other people around like me. I was going to a very big, busy, conservative, evangelical church, and I went on a mission trip to Kenya. Unfortunately, I accidentally came out as a lesbian while I was on that trip. People were talking about who they fancied and I mentioned a girl that I fancied and that wasn't seen as okay. And people basically stopped looking after me, stopped caring for me for the rest of the trip. I was completely alone and isolated and I became very, very unwell, being sick almost every day. When we got home, the doctors thought maybe I had malaria because I was so unwell and I had loads of blood tests, but nothing came back. Eventually, they diagnosed severe anxiety. I was asked to leave that church soon after, and I did so quite gladly. I stopped going to church altogether. I didn't stop having a relationship with God, but I didn't have a relationship with the church. I don't think I believed in the church at all. But when I went to university, things changed. I was so lonely and sad and struggling, and I walked into the university chaplaincy and things were different there. Suddenly, here was a church space where people were explicitly saying that LGBT people were welcomed and that the ways we had been treated by other bits of the church were wrong. And I was able to start exploring calling. And I realized that talking about how I had experienced God 
was so important as part of who I was. And immediately I was drawn into this circle of lay ministry where I could share my gifts and my stories with people who wanted to listen. And I could listen to other people who had experiences that were so similar and yet so different to mine. And I met other trans people and that was life-saving because once I knew that it was okay to transition, I knew who I was, everything felt right. Transition was a long journey, a long journey that was intertwined with my calling journey, my call to faith. I've lost friends and family members and I've gained friends and family members during that time. But transition and calling don't end. They are a continuing journey. My calling changes and grows. At first, I thought I was called to be a minister who was in or stealth, to not talk about being trans. But I soon realised that people needed that mirror. I needed that mirror when I was a child, as a young person. So it's important for me to speak out. My calling has developed and changed and continues to develop and change. And my transition developed and changed and continues to develop and change. I used to think I was called to be a man with all of the expectations and baggage that that contains, to have all the surgeries go all the way, be the manliest man I could possibly be. It's okay, you can laugh. I'm not manly. I'm camp and that's okay. And I've transitioned back a bit towards centre because actually I'm just called to be me. And me certainly isn't a girl. It fits somewhere between. And I'm so happy with who I am now. But I don't pretend to know who I'll be called to be tomorrow or next year or in a decade. God enables. God, even I think, encourages change. And that goes for how we read scripture too. I believe that the Bible isn't a single dead text that stays as it is. It is living and growing in and with the spirit and in and with us. And that's why I chose the verse that I chose for today. There is neither Jew or Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Because that shifts how we read Genesis, doesn't it? Let's look at that creation story again. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But we also noticed God drawing the horizons. With a steady hand, they pulled the ink across that liminal space between the heavens and the earth, a tissue thin line where earth meets heaven and we may meet God. Everyone knows that God separated the light from the darkness. We also found God smiling as they swirled darkness into the light, creating the dusk. Later, we heard God laughing as they sparked light in the darkness, the most beautiful sunrise emerging from its hiding place. Everyone knows that God separated the land from the seas. But when we clamber joyfully through rock pools, or paddle at the shoreline, feeling the wet sands between our toes, we marvel at the way God mixed land and sea together at the margins. Everyone knows that God created sea creatures and winged birds. My favourite animal is the penguin. As I record the story of creation, should I put the penguins in with the winged birds or with the sea creatures? And what about the seahorse? Does it have a place in this wonderful tale? Some people say that God created mankind in his own image 
male and female he created them. So now I'm seriously angry, and maybe God is too, because someone made God he when it should read they, because perhaps the plural terrifies them. And the neutral, well, that just doesn't fit into their hierarchical frame. Someone changed humankind into mankind to uphold the patriarchy, and you know what? They split the androgyne into two prematurely because they were focused on standing out from all of the other creation myths. Oh, and because they wanted to make sure that people didn't think it was okay to be trans, like me. And God says that the writers missed bits out, because when God looks at the horizons, and the sun rises, and the rock pools, and the penguin, and the seahorse, and people who are androgynous, and trans, and intersex, and non-conforming, like you and me. Not only does God say, these are good. God says they are, we are, beautiful. And God is so filled with pride that they can't hold back the tears. Our identity is as beloved children of God. For me, that means being a beloved child of God who is also trans, who is also a minister, who is also autistic, who is also married, who's also the proud parent of a really, really annoying Jackawawa, which is a cross between a Jack Chi, Jack Russell, sorry, and a Chihuahua. It means so many different things. But we are loved. I am loved. You are loved. The story develops and changes and grows. I am. You are. We are. In a constant state of transformation, growth of change. God is growing each of us. Are you ready to let that change happen? Hello everyone and welcome to your favourite part of the week where we get to share a love feast together. Now, Love Feast is our way of expressing the sharing, belonging and friendship that we have together as followers of Jesus. It's also a way for us to share some of the hospitality and welcome that sharing food together does for us. And this is something that usually as a community, we'd love to be able to do together in person. Um, unfortunately, we can't do it together. Uh, so we're doing it apart, but we'll do it now. And that means you need to bring whatever type of food you want. It doesn't have to be anything special to the table now and share with us in our virtual love feast. One of the reasons why we like to do this is because Jesus uh, spent a lot of time eating food with different groups of people. Um, one of the stories I thought about when just planning this moment together was a story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Now, I think a lot of the time we hear teaching about the miraculous nature of it and we focus on the miracle of Jesus as a provider and the people that got fed, you know, the 5,000 plus men and women besides. But I think considering our theme for this particular week, if we bear in mind all the different types of people that would have been present back in Jesus's time, there wasn't just one type of Jewish belief system. There were several. And so here's Jesus providing a meal for people that believe maybe several different things about who he was, about who God was, that things that might have been in conflict with one another. And yet he still literally catered, I guess, for them all. And I think there's a lesson in that for us all, just about how inclusive Jesus is, that there were people there that would have been indifferent to him, totally ignorant of who he claimed to be you know, totally in opposition, but maybe just curious, as well as those who were considered to be his followers. And I think if we can learn, as we've tried to do in the session with church today, if we can learn to be inclusive and continue to challenge ourselves on inclusivity, then maybe we can truly come to reflect the love of Jesus in our lives, especially with who we choose to sit down and have dinner with. Amen. I'm going to pray a short prayer and then we're going to invite you to join in with us in this love feast. 
Lord, we thank you for the example that you set for us in not only coming to this earth as one of us, but showing us how to live. Lord, we thank you that we don't have to do this life alone. Lord, That we, we thank you that we have you to follow as our guide. Lord, I pray that you'll help us, each and every one of us, just to be more inclusive. Lord, just show us our blind spots and help us to truly love other people as you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, sadly, at this point in lockdown or the semi-lockdown that we're currently in, banana bread's out the window. You know, there's no freshly baked sponge. This is a Sainsbury's carrot cake, but it's the best carrot cake that we've got. So whatever you brought to the feast, then please enjoy it now with us. Everybody, whoever you are, are very, very welcome. And I hope you all know that. Let's eat. A number of us from Inclusive Gathering Birmingham were part of a gathering a few weeks ago called Space to Be, specifically for LGBTQ plus Christians. And the video that we're about to show in just a moment was, was shown at that event. And a few people were like, we need to share this at our, at our church gathering too. Um, so thank you so much to Lee Evans for being willing to let us share this video of, of his poem. Lee uh, is based in Liverpool and um, I will just let it play. We know how it goes from our head to our toes, day in and day out from the start. Some people poke while others just joke, but the rest try to tear us apart. We're called he, she's and fishies, shim shims and sweeties, she males, trannies or it. By the turfs and the trolls who use laugh out loud lols and bigots who don't care a bit. Some deny we exist, but some get the gist, as the haters still mock us and jeer. But if they really knew what we all go through, they'd say it's not us who are queer. But it's they who act strange when they try to rearrange the facts into absolute fiction. With their rumours and lies and toilet troll spies, who act like the classic bad vixen. But stay proud and take heart, cause we've come a long way. And despite the abuse, we're much stronger. So let them like it or not, cause who gives a job and don't listen to that crap any longer. Just be loving and kind, don't make us all blind by poking them back in the eye. But stay true to yourself as you exercise stealth. Stay strong, stay safe and don't cry. Cause we're making big waves and despite all the fuss, the hateful campaigns won't spoil that for us. Cause as many would like to erase we exist, many more understand, support and assist. So let them all hiss and just have this say, cause they'll never succeed or ruin our day. For we're gloriously strong, diverse and belong in this city and every great nation. And without fear or permission to be who we are, we can now live in celebration. So those sisters resist us who harm their own cause and kin, those smiling assassins who kill with a grin, the character of trans folk who do them no harm, with their castigation and slayers and radical charm, as they hide in toilets, posting slogans and banners, without a care for children who've got better manners, when they need to spend a penny or two, and are faced with obscene shaped posters besmirching me and you, that they think is so clever cause it's in your face, but to frighten your children is an utter disgrace. Yet still they believe they're superior and strong, but they're just minority bigots who couldn't be more wrong. And now no longer out in the cold, but fully embraced into the fold, never again seen as the LBG poor relation, but the teeth are together in our rainbow nation. We've got friends and allies and support galore. We've got love on our side and even the law. So let's continue to be the good people we are and not respond with aggression, cause we're better by far. Cause that'll divide us and that's just what they want. So let's face them together as a united front. And when they do poke and discredit trans folk with attacks and unsavory slander, let's blow them a kiss in place of a hiss and take a bow as part of our candor. But we're braver than they and all warriors strong. We beat with one heart and we all belong in cities and countries near and afar and in our Liverpool home who supports who we are because we're all flesh and blood. And here's the thing, when hate silences one voice, the rest of us sing. And as the tide of the Mersey kisses our shore, she bathes us with love, acceptance and more. So keep moving forward and don't sink, but swim because love overcomes and hate will never win.
comments today. Um, if you've got questions for Alex, and maybe you've been writing some things down or storing them up in your mind, we'd love you to join us again at 5.15 uh, on Zoom for our question and answer session. If you haven't yet registered for it, there's still time to do so. I'll put up a link now, um, but you'll need to register via Eventbrite. And when you do, then the link to the Zoom will, will appear for you. Um, get in touch with me at um, newchurchbirmingham at gmail.com if you have any trouble, and I'll be keeping an eye on it in the next few minutes. Um, so please do join us for that. I think it will be a really um, special and important time for us in our learning journey about how we welcome and include our trans siblings a little bit better. Um, next week, we are having our monthly kind of book podcast club focus. Um, and we're going to be looking at the Book of Joy, which is um, basically a conversation between the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu about largely joy and suffering. And so um, we'll be, you know, if you've read that book, great. If not, you can still feel free to join us and join in the conversation. Um, and the uh, during the, the gathering, we'll be having conversations around the themes there and then an opportunity to discuss those themes afterwards. So um, do join us for that. Also, we're, we're thinking about um, how in this strange season, um, we connect with one another socially and um, as we examine what the changes in some of the lockdown restrictions mean for us, um, we're thinking about over the summer how we do some more to, to get connected. So we're thinking more about that. But in the meantime, um, on Friday evening, we're going to have another pub quiz, which is a, an opportunity just to hang out and get together and, you know, have a pub quiz, but on Zoom. So uh, I'll put a post, a post up a link on, on um, the feed about that. And you're very welcome to join us and bring a friend if you'd like to. I want to say a big thank you to those of you who are part of our um, community and give financially to help keep us going. Um, you might wonder, because I, you know, I offer this opportunity to give every week, and you might wonder, what, what do we actually spend the money on? Um, well, there's lots of little things that um, we, we need funding for to keep going. So some of the online stuff that we do costs money. Um, and then, you know, when we meet in person, we love to be able to help people pay their, um, their way there if they need support doing that. Food. Um, we want to make this as accessible as possible. Um, so th there's things like that and also being able to respond to needs in our community and in the, the wider city as we, as we see them. So if you have any questions about that, please do get in touch. But thank you to those of you who already give. And if you'd like to make a gift today, again, toward, our, toward what it costs to keep the community running, um, you can go to inclusivegathering.org.uk forward slash give. So um, with that, I think we'll see you at 5.15, hopefully on Zoom with Alex. Um, and I'm just going to close this bit of our time with our, um, our blessing that we always finish with. May we live fully, may we love wastefully, and may we have the courage to be all that God has created us to be. See you soon.